afternoon, everyone. This is Cassandra Taylor, the founder and CEO of Top Flight Defense Incorporated, a nonprofit organization created by a woman veteran for all women. Today, this Saturday, this beautiful Saturday afternoon, we are going to start with our annual breast cancer survivor story. And today, our first person that, our first beautiful survivor will be my sister in arms, Jackie Iverson. Jackie, please introduce yourself. Hello, I am Jackie Iverson. I am a US Army veteran, and I am also a breast cancer survivor. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, diagnosed with breast cancer back in uh, 2014 uh, with stage 3A, uh, triple positive. Um, if you guys are wondering what triple positive means, it means that I, everything that basically made me a female was feeding my cancer. So uh, as a result of that, um, I was given uh, basically very, very little options. Um, and so I decided to go ahead and do a bilateral mastectomy um, as both of the, most of the tumors were in my right side. Um, and then I decided that I was going to follow the treatment plan. I did actually actually uh, a little over a, a year of chemotherapy. Um, so I did uh, four different types of chemos. The first one uh, was called adriamycin, which I did for two months uh, every other week. Then the second round uh, consisted of taxotere. And um, I can't remember the, the other name, but I did that for about eight months. And then that was every three weeks, I want to say. And then my final round, I did for about an additional four months for every, I want to say every three weeks as well, followed by um, daily radiation for uh, 38 days. So I did 38 rounds of radiation every day, except for Sunday. Uh, after my My treatment was over. Of course, I began my breast reconstruction, which was probably one of the worst things that I've ever gone through outside of the chemo and all of the pain that that caused. So I basically, in addition to um, having to relearn to walk because the chemotherapy was so, um, it was so strong and it, and, it, and it created such bad neuropathy within my hands and my feet, I had to relearn to walk and and uh, then I had to go through the breast reconstruction. Uh, and simultaneously, uh, I took a fall, uh, which was caused by the neuropathy that caused, my, uh, that caused me to land on my right arm. And uh, then I ended up developing a, a condition called lymphedema. That condition was basically uh, a result of when they did the bilateral mastectomy, they actually took uh, about 28 lymph nodes out of my right side. So um, after that, you're just pretty much prone to having some kind of uh, lymphedema uh, situation. And for those people that don't know what, uh, what lymph nodes are, I'm going to try to explain the best way I know how. And it's basically uh, kind of like the highway in your body. So uh, the lymph nodes basically tell your blood, which... Okay, so you're gonna go down the street and you're gonna make a turn this way or that way. So it tells the blood in your body which way to flow and how to redistribute itself through your body. But if you don't have any lymph nodes, or like I don't on my right side, then it's no, it's no, it's no conductor there to tell the blood where to go so it stays backed up in my arm. So it has to be pushed out manually. Um, so I have to wear like these different sleeves and um, it's not really painful. Sometimes it, the numbness can, can make it hurt. Um, sometimes trying to drain it can make it hurt, but for the most part, it's just like a chronic condition. 
Um, and anyway, after all of that, after I went through reconstruction, multiple reconstructions, um, uh, Actually, I just had my last one last year. So um, I'm still kind of in the process of healing, even after, you know, I've been in remission now for about seven years. Um, I know one of the things that people asked me was, um, what, what were some of the things that I did to actually survive the condition? Well, initially, when I was diagnosed, uh, the doctors basically told me I had a 54% uh, percent chance of surviving the treatment. Um, so they did not really have really great prognosis for me at the time we were trying to figure out why the condition had, uh, like mutated so quickly as a U.S. Army veteran. I am I'm also a, um, a chemical exposure survivor. So in addition to developing the breast cancer from the, com from the chemicals that I was exposed to, one of which was depleted uranium. The other one was a substance called CARC. So not only did I develop stage three breast cancer, but I also developed chronic respiratory conditions. So I suffer from uh, severe uh, asthma, COPD, um, and just you know constantly having different types of respiratory illnesses. But um, so the, the, the best thing that I can tell you um, as to how I was able to kind of get through it. Number one, I had to really have a lot of conversations with God because um, times got so bad that my body, at, at the worst stage of my treatment, my body was so riddled with pain that I did not want to continue the treatment anymore. Uh, one day I went to the hospital to have treatment and I was just sitting there and I said, you know what? I said, I can't do this anymore. I, I'm, I'm done. I can't do it. And one of the ladies that was at the hospital, she was actually a naturopathic oncologist. And she said, well, Jackie, she said, come on downstairs with me and let's have some lunch and let's talk about this. So, you know, I was reluctant, but I went with her anyway. And she, and I ordered all this food when we got downstairs. It was, it was, it's kind of funny now because I ordered all this food and I had so many blisters in my mouth and in my throat from the chemo that I literally could not take one bite, but my mind wanted all this food. By then I've already lost about 60 pounds. And uh, she was like, she said, well, you look like you're pretty hungry, Jackie. I said, I am. I said, but everything I eat, it, it, it hurts. It hurts to go in. It hurts once I digest it. Like it just everything about eating was so painful to me. And so she said, well, Jackie, she said, I heard what you said about, you know, not, not want to continue treatment. She said, and I just want to ask you one question. And I was like, OK, you know, what's the question? She said, what if this treatment is the one treatment that prevents your cancer from coming back? Wouldn't you want to go ahead and risk it and just, you know, try to power through it? And I really had to think about it because I was in a lot of pain, like head to toe, like nails falling off, hair fell out, eyebrows. I didn't have anything. So I'm just sitting there thinking about, do I really want to continue to do this? The answer, of course, was no. But then, you know, I'm a logical person. So once she explained it to me, like this being the one that would stop you know, this from happening again, I told her, I said, okay, I said, I'm gonna go ahead and go through with it. I said, but um, honestly, I said, you guys would have to knock me out moving forward. So really that's how I got through it. Every time I got to treatment, they would sedate me so that, um, so that I didn't have to continue to watch the process because it had become, it, it had began to take a toll on me just watching it. Um, but once my treatment was, once I got to my very last treatment, the thing that I remember the most is I made a big sign and I rang the bell and, you know, I, I did a videotape of myself going through my last treatment. And um, I remember looking up at my nurse and this lady had been like by my side at every treatment for that whole year and some change. And I looked at her and I said, Carolyn, I said, well, 
since this is my last treatment, I was like, now, now what do I do? And she said, she turned around and she looked at me and she said, Jackie, you live. So that's, you know, my survivor story. Um, and the one thing that, uh, that was asked of me also was what do I wish my family had known about what was going on was I wish that they had a, understood that I needed more support than I was given, that um, I wish that they had a, I just wish that they had a been, you know, more understanding and more present to, to make me feel like um, I wasn't as, as, I wasn't going through it alone. So that's my, that's my survival story. Oh, Jackie, thank you so, so very much um, for sharing that story with us. It is amazing to hear um, the stories. And that's just one of many that we are about to hear. And I thank you. I don't know yeah, if thank any, pardon? I was thanking Jackie for sharing. Yeah, yes, that's yes. all. Yes, we, we thank you. And I apologize if it's going in and out, I do apologize. I, it's my internet. I thought my internet was, was much better. I moved rooms. So hopefully we can continue to hear um, without disruption. Um, the survival stories, but I thank you, Jackie. Let's see that shirt you got on, girl. What that shirt say? What? We are what? We are looking at a survivor. Yes. Yes. Now, what's that on that sleeve? What's it on that sleeve? What's on that sleeve? Other side, other side. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, top flight. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you're muted right now, Jackie, so we can't hear you. We couldn't hear you. I said it says top flight. I said I'm representing for top flight for the fist today. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you so much. So next up we have um Miss Vicky Williams as our breast cancer survivor. Come on, girl, tell your story. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. My name is Vicki R. Williams Cullens, and I have been a breast cancer survivor for 14 years this year. I was diagnosed on February 26, 2008, and I was diagnosed with infiltrating ductal carcinoma, stage one. But because I was diagnosed before the age of 45, it was um, called early onset. And so let me kind of give you some some insight on my story. So I found a lump in 2007 and I just was drawn to my right breast. It was a lump underneath um, my areola and my nipple. So my boyfriend at the time, he was like, you need to go to the doctor, you need to go to the doctor. At the same time, my mother was going through kidney failure. So I was like, uh, so I finally went to the doctor. Well, when they did the mammogram, the radiologist said it didn't have the characteristics of cancer. My boyfriend at the time said he was in the Navy, served in the Navy, electronics, and he said, let me see those films. He looked at the film from the past year, looked at the film from the present year. He said, something's wrong. Y'all need to stick it up. You know, he was kind of crude, but hey, it is what it is. So on Valentine's Day, 2008, they did a needle, ultrasound needle guided biopsy. So biopsy is they take part of the tissue and they have it examined to see if there are cancerous cells in there. So the radiologist on February 26th had me in a room, face was crestfallen. And he said to me, you have breast cancer. I said, okay, so what we gonna do? I took charge. My boyfriend, bless his little heart, he started crying. I was like, man, I ain't got time for all that. Called my brother up. He was in shock. I was like, okay, I ain't got time for nobody crying. Nobody crying. I don't have time for that. What we gonna do? So, of course, they, luckily, we had a nurse oncologist. And the nurse oncologist was like, don't get on the internet. The internet was going in 08. But she was like, don't get on the internet. Don't research anything. Don't do all that. 
What did I do? I got on the internet and researched because information is power, ladies. Information is power. So I researched it. And then when we saw the oncologist, we had conversations. I saw the surgical oncologist. We had conversations. And basically, I told every doctor that was on my team that I was the project manager of my care. I took charge because at the end of the day, you know your body. They have a medical degree, but you know you, okay? So I told all my girlfriends, I, I like to walk when I'm stressed. So I called everybody on the phone. I was like, yo, what you doing? That was like nothing. I said, oh, by the way, I got breast cancer. I call you later. They was like, what? What is you doing? One of my girlfriends was like, Vicky, what is you doing? I was like, listen, if you're going to call me back and start crying, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. There ain't no tears. No, I don't want to hear it. So I ended up, ladies, having a lumpectomy. That's when they take a, a tissue. I ended up, because my margins were not clear, I had a re-excision. So they came back in, did another one. Then I had a mastectomy. I ended up having six rounds of chemo, tax, taxotere, adriamycin, better known as the red devil, and cytoxin. I had it for six months. Every 28 days, I had chemo. The first chemo I had brought me to my knees, literally. And when I say literally, I mean literally. My immune system had dropped to a one. No one could be around me. I could barely stand. My boyfriend, he had to hold me up to bathe me because I couldn't stand to bathe myself. I couldn't take a shower. So chemo was rough. I didn't lose weight because I was on steroids and um, I was just eating whatever I could eat. I craved clementines. I craved um, Krispy Kreme donuts. I craved bread. I craved lemon. I craved a lot of citrus. I ate lemon chicken. So needless to say, I was puffy, <laughs> fluffy. So my boyfriend, he quit his job to take care of me. And so after my third chemo, we were in, he was in the kitchen washing dishes and I turned to him. I said, yo, he's like, what's up? I said, we getting married. He said, when? October 12th. And he showed up. And we have been married since then. And I've had other chronic illnesses since then. Um, I do believe they started from the chemo because we were aware that the chemotherapy could damage my heart. My heart has, I have, I'm in heart failure, but I'm doing much better. I've had two strokes, but I'm doing much better. I, I had my first stroke in February, my second stroke in March, but God is good. And what got me through this was my friends, my family, and my sorority sisters, and my Terry, who's my husband. And I had a miniature snouts at the time. And his name was Bootsy, Bootzilla, after Bootsy Collins, because, you know, you got to be funky. That's how we do it. Um, what would I have liked my family and friends to know? They were just on the money. I, I just, I mean, when I got married, I had a girl from mine who was a professional decorator. She decorated my wedding and my reception for free. Um, my girlfriend who was a wedding planner, she did that for free. You know, people were always dropping off food, calling, checking. The only thing I had was you can't call me and cry because I don't want to hear it. I don't. Now that was me. But I will say this, lady, or anybody watching, know your breasts. Know your breasts. Because it wasn't the mammogram that found it. It was us. And if it had been up to the radiologist, I wouldn't be here talking to you now. Because it was steadily growing. You have got to know that you are the project manager of your care. And I mean that with everything in my soul. Doctors, they know what they know, but you know your body. You know what's working, you know what's not. And at the end of the day, you know how you want to live. Quality of life is everything. But what was most important to me, I think, was my faith in God. Um, I call myself a cancer annihilator. Not survivor, because I don't survived everything. So, you know, hey, you know, as a black woman, in fact, we still here, we don't survive. But I'm an annihilator. I made cancer my dog. 
because I'm not going to curse on camera. But at the end of the day, I knew I had to have faith in God. And I always said faith, tenacity, and purpose was my motto. Faith in God, tenacious about my care, and knowing that I have purpose, I have value. And ladies, at the end of the day, I got my little shirt on. I had it in my car. Yes, I do, with the big old eye. But I, I want to just share with you, know your body, first of all. Two, affordable health care is out there. If you don't have insurance on your job, get it through the affordable health care. It's not like it's some bull crap. It's great. Utilize it. Three, um, know your history, your family history. I pushed because at that time, my aunt, my paternal aunt and my maternal aunt both had breast cancer. So I knew my history. I knew the odds were against me. You have to know your history, ladies. And at the end of the day, the doctors, they work for you. Yes, they do. Period. So was there anything else, Cassandra, that I needed to answer? Because I got chemo brain and stroke brain. So girl, you know, I'm just trying to be it. <laughs> no, baby. I'm, I'm with Soror. When I tell you I love your spirit, I really do. And I, and I think that positive spirit, that strength within you is what I'm hearing from you and Jackie. And I know, I know Veronica. So I know the strength is there. From what I've seen of Simone, I know the strength is there. And that's what I'm finding is going to take. And you mentioned yes. about the oncologist surgeon. Yes. Next, uh, on Wednesday, I think it's Wednesday, we actually will have one from the VA come on. I'll awesome. post it. He's going to do a session on surgery. So I'm going to um, post that for you. But I thank you. I thank you. And I know you have to run too, but I'm going to show a brief video. And All right, Smooch is back at you, Soror. Um, I'm going to show a brief video. Simone and Veronica, can I show this brief seven-minute video? Okay, it's from another survivor. Um, she wasn't able to um, show. She wasn't able to come on. Let me see if I can find it right quick so I can pull it up. Yep, I sure can. So give me one second. I'm going to share the screen. And hopefully... Uh, can you all see my screen? Can you see it? Yes. Can you hear her? Yes, ma'am. Could you yes. mute me, please? Can I what? Mute me, so I, because I can't mute it right now. Hello. Yes, can you hear? I can hear, but I not no, I can't hear. <laughs> That's why I came off mute. Okay, so you can't hear her talking? Okay. No, I couldn't hear her talking. Me neither. I can hear you but not her, the video. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, that's all right. I'll post I'll post it on our page. I'm gonna stop sharing. All right. Well, I tried. So we'll go back to uh let's go back. Hold on. Let me get back to it. And stop sharing. All right. So that's all right. I'll just post that video onto our page connected with it. 
So um, Simone and Veronica, either one of you can step up and share your story. Okay, I'll go. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Simone Green. I am in uh, Chicago and I was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer in 2016. Um, it's funny, uh, the, the woman who went before me, she mentioned that her boyfriend at the time and then they got married. I had a similar story. Um, I was dating a guy and after we, after I found out I had breast cancer, he pretty much told me I was not going to have that surgery as his girlfriend. I was going to have the surgery as his wife. And a week before my surgery, uh, we got married and we're still married uh, almost seven years later. Yes. Yes. One of the best decisions I ever made, but um, I had uh, inducto carcinoma stage one breast cancer. I had a lumpectomy. Um, they also didn't get clear all the margins. So they went back in to, to clear that. The surgery went well and I had 30 rounds of radiation. Uh, and surprisingly, I handled that well. I know it's not nearly as bad as, as chemo, but I went to work every day and left work and went and did my um, radiation every day for 30 days, except for the weekend. And then two years later, literally to the day, my breast cancer returned in the same spot. It was aggressive. And I had a bilateral um, mastectomy and reconstructive surgery all at once. Um, it was, I think a 13 hour surgery. It went well and um, I'm still here. Thank God I am here. It's been uh, quite a journey. Of course, you know, once you get cancer you always think about it coming back again and for it to come back in two years after the radiation, it, it, it was scary, much more scary for me the second time than the first time, um, which is, is really kind of crazy. But, you know, some of my worst fears that it would come back and it did. And I live with that fear, but I don't let that fear cripple me because I have to keep living. I mean, you know, cancer, it, it is what it is. And you know, I hope it doesn't come back. I you know, always think, is it going to come back in another form? Am I going to have ovarian cancer and all of these things? And I just, I can't worry about that. I, I, I take care of my health. I go to the doctor. If it's something that I feel is not right um, about my body, I get it checked just for that peace of mind. Um, but yeah, 2016, I had cancer for the first time, 2018 for the second time. And um, as of right now, I am cancer-free and living my best life. <laughs> um, as far as family and friends, I mean, I'm, I'm truly blessed. My husband took very good care of me. I mean, I too, I, I couldn't do any of my own personal self-care for weeks after my bilateral surgery. And he did it and never complained, not once. Um, my friends, I had friends fly in to take care of me. Uh, um, I had friends who brought food and, and vegetables and fruits over to my house. Um, people called and checked on me. I just, my, my circle is, is tight and, uh, I'm really, really blessed. I mean, I had a, one of my oldest friend in the world flew in and stayed with me when I had my surgery. Um, a lot of my other friends just, you know, they stepped up to the plate, my family as well. I'm really lucky. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Simone. And which most of um, our viewers don't know, Simone is uh, Maywood's very own voice. She, <laughs> she's always out singing. You will see this lady. Her voice is amazing. She, she oh, sings so and much. she sings and <laughs> she sings. And I think she has a set tonight, don't you? Um, I do. It's, it's a private show tonight uh, okay. downtown, but I do have a show coming up on Black Friday. Come on, at, tell us um, about it. Yes, yes. So Black Friday, November 25th, I have a special show at Q's Lounge, which is the Black Fire Brigade if you're in Chicago at 8404 South Kedzie. Um, it's a lot of fun. Ticks are $20. 
And um, all that information is on my, all of my social media, which is Simone Green Live. And that's website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's all Simone Green Live. I keep all of my upcoming performances there. But that one is a special one because the Black Fire Brigade, they do fantastic things in the community for our our young people to prepare them to become an EMT, a firefighter, or a police. And they are 100% funded by themselves. And they've put over 500 young black and brown people through the program. So a lot of the EMTs, if, if you have an emergency situation or a fire or a police officer, if they're black, if they're young, a lot of times they've come through this program. So um, it's, it's always nice to, to support that cause. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Simone, for sharing your story. Thank I you. I really appreciate it. And I promise you, this is what I'm hearing. Strength. Yes. Ladies, so yes. when, when this shows on our YouTube channel and it goes through um, on our Facebook, one thing that I can say, if nothing else um, we will get out of this, is having one faith in God. Yes. Um, having strength within ourselves, being strong through it all, because it's devastating. Anytime you hear the word cancer, and then three, that support system, and knowing your body. Yes. Vicki stressed that so many times, knowing your body, knowing your body, Absolutely. knowing your body, knowing your body. Um, okay, thank you, Jackie. I know you got to catch a flight. Catch a flight, not feelings, baby. That's my line now. Um, <laughs> but... I, I will promise you that's that's perfect. And I'll I'll do a recap at the end. But come on, Veronica. Um, once again, thank you, Simone. And if I was in town on the 25th, I would be there to um, support you and and root you on. But when I come back, I'm gonna be out in the audience screaming, yelling, and screaming. Be like, put me in, coach. Put me in. <laughs> I love it. Sounds All good. Right. All Thanks right, love you, girl. girl. Thank you. Love you too. All right, so Ms. Veronica, let yeah. me find you. Okay, so, no, I, it keeps coming up some, wait, where are you, girl? Where you at? I'm right here. Okay, I see you now. I see you, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> well, Ms. Veronica, I have to tell them, I've, I've been knowing Veronica for several years, and I met Veronica through a mutual friend, but the best thing about um, how we met was not knowing that my brother who used to work at the post office with her used to be a good friend of hers. And they, she loved my brother and God rest his soul. He passed away of colon cancer. And so me and Veronica have been um, sisters ever since. And I'm going to post her video. It's about seven, I think it's about, it's about 30 minutes long. I, I interviewed Veronica back in 20, 17 or 2018 yes. um, on her breast cancer story. So survival story. And so I thank you, Veronica, for coming on now and uh, bringing in the rear. We may have somebody else to want to chime in, but I, I, I'm so glad that you're here with us and want to share your story. So um, go right ahead. All right. Um, my name is Veronica Julian. I am from Illinois, Chicago. I live in Westchester. Um, I am a three time survivor. The first time I was diagnosed, I was diagnosed at the age of 28 by me just going for my regular physicals. I would go to my res regular physicals, usually around my birthday, which is in June. And so, um, you know, my doctor was doing my exam and he said, man, it seemed like I felt something. He tried to feel again. He couldn't feel anything. So he said, you know what? I don't, I don't have peace with that. I'm going to send you for an ultrasound. He said, I know I felt something. And so I went to get the ultrasound. The ultrasound didn't show anything. So I went back to my appointment after the ultrasound. He said, mm -hmm. he said, I sent you for that ultrasound for a reason. He said, um, I think I'm gonna uh, send you for a mammogram. He said, I felt something. He said, and I, I, I'm not gonna be at peace if I don't send you for a further test. So I, um, he, I, he set up the appointment for me to get uh, a mammogram. And because I was 28, 
okay, even the the person who did my ultrasound was like, um, uh, it can't be cancer because I was only 28. And so go back to the mammogram. I did get the mammogram and was it the same day or the next day, they called me with the results saying I have cancer. I'm like, cancer, I'm only 28 years old. I don't have any kids. Um, I was scared. You know, I really didn't know what to expect. So I um, went and got the um, mammogram and when the test came back, it was, like I say, it was positive. So I had to, at that time, they, I had to get like a needle biopsy at the time. Now, uh, as time has progressed, you don't have to get the needle biopsy. Whatever machine that they use, they can tell you what size it is. How, you know, um, uh, they can tell you, I'm sorry, I have chemo brain. So, <laughs> so uh, but anyway, they can tell you what, size it is and everything. And so it was um, early stages and I had, they removed the lump. So I had surgery and once they, you know, did the uh, mammogram, it came back positive. They did a, um, they removed the lump and it wasn't in my lip um, nods or anything like that. So that was good. So I after that, I had 28, 28 rounds of radiation. And after that, I was good to go. And then again, maybe about 12, 13 years later, I developed breast cancer again. And how I found out is just going for a regular mammogram. And at that time, um, they gave me chemo the second time. Okay, so they gave me chemo the second time. Um, I only was able really to take two treatments because it did me so bad. I was so weak. I was sort of like passing out. Um, I was falling, whatever you name, I was, it was happening to my body, only for me just having two treatments. So they stopped the treatments. I went for further tests. Those two treatments had shrunk my mass. So they put me on like a hormonal shot once a month to, because mine was, my breast cancer, it's like estrogen, extra estrogen is being re, re, um, produced in my body. And so they um, put me on a shot once I, you know, the test came, my mammogram, when I took the next mammogram, came back stating that um, the lump was completely gone. So at that time, I was considered cancer-free again. So I, I was put on the shot. I would take that every 30 days. And then uh, I would take um, letrozole um, every day. So I want to say maybe about seven years, I might be off, <laughs> but seven years later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer again. And that time, I didn't show any emotions at all. And how I realized Okay, what was happening was I cooked for Thanksgiving. And after I cooked for Thanksgiving, I'm like, man, my back is hurting. I'm like, okay, maybe because I was standing up cooking all day. So as the days progressed, the next day, next day, next day, 
my back continued to hurt worse. I'm like, something isn't right. I could barely move. My husband had to help me put my clothes on. So we, he said, let's go to the emergency room. So we went to the emergency room and we, they took um, uh, x-ray of my back. And so once the, uh, they took the x-ray, I came home and my doctor, my regular primary doctor called me with the results because I actually had went to my primary doctor and he sent me for the backache and he's, he's the one sent me to take the x-ray, okay? So I went through the, with the x-ray and um, I came home and I got a call from him. I want to say, I think it was that day. If it wasn't that day, the next day, he said, um, it's showing that I had a fracture in my back. Okay. And the fracture in my back was the reason why I was having the back pain. So I um, went for more tests and that's when it showed up that I had breast cancer again. So this time I went through chemo for some reason, I guess it wasn't because the, the first time I had chemo, it was the red devil. And I guess if my body didn't agree with it at all. So in the second time, I can't actually tell you what the name of the chemo that I had the second time, but I had um, six uh, rounds of chemo and I did that. I was, I was sick. I lost probably about 40, 45, 50 pounds because I couldn't eat at all. And After that, um, I was sent for more tests and mammogram and all that. And it showed that it had shrunk tremendously. And to make a long story short, um, I'm here today to talk about my third time as a survivor as a breast cancer a breast cancer survivor and you know what got me through everything was my husband my mother my sister my kids my friends the phone calls um even when I didn't answer because I didn't feel like talking I was too sick to talk it just made the situation much better. So now as I go, um, and it's my third time in remission and hopefully it's my last time. And I just thank God who's the head of my life. I did a whole lot of praying, um, stating to God that I, I, I will live and I will not die because I have my kids, my husband, and my mother, because a couple of times she was here, she um, would break down and she was trying not to break down to see me in the state that I was in. But it was my family and my God that helped me get through my situation. And if it had not been for them, I don't know if I would have continued on with treatment. And that's my story. I know I was kind of all over the place, but hey, I got chemo brain. <laughs> Sister, you got me over here crying because I promise you, I, I, I had no idea um, that it came back again until I read a post of yours. And... Mm. I, I, I was in tears like I am now because I've always I've always stated that you are my sister. Oh, and I'm sorry that I wasn't there 
like I should have been there. But I knew okay. something had to be wrong because you wasn't returning my text messages. I was I, sick I, at that I, time. I was, I was like, sick. wait a minute. Something, no. something is wrong. Is she mad at me? No, did I, I was look, not. I'm like, did I do something? Did I say something? Girl, I didn't. I did not know. Um, but what I said, I'm going to keep on reaching out to her because I knew something had to be wrong. And when I read that post, that's when you responded back to me in that text. And I, I promise you, I love you. I love um, you too. I'm proud of your strength. And everybody's story talks about the strength. You got to have strength. You got to have that family. You got to have the good friends that's going to be there for you. And we may not understand your struggle because some of us don't have cancer, but we can appreciate your strength. And we can continue to give you what you need. And that's that shoulder, that's that ear, that's that ride to the store or, you know, the drop off. You know, say, hey, say, and I, I'm like, what you need, sister girl? I, I just, I need some grapes. And here I am, I'm in Joliet, I'm driving to Westchester. I'm gonna be there for you. Please don't hesitate. Cause you know, you, you were there for me. And I just want you to know that top flight, Cassandra Taylor and the McCraney family, we, we, we got you. Anything that you need. Um, we got you and we love you and you are going to survive. You're right. going to continue to beat this. And you and have to, you, and not to cut you off, but if okay. you don't have faith and you don't have faith, you're not going to get through it. Yeah. You have to have faith that you will get healed and God is going to fix it and take care of it <laughs> and that's 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 my story and and I, I i i pray that god continue to keep me i'm here for a reason i yep. keep asking god to show me because i'm still here for a reason and i quite haven't got the answer yet why i'm still here but I know I'm here for my kids and my family, but otherwise he has me here for another reason. I don't know if it's the mouth of gab or, you know, talking with my friends or to help them with situations that they go through. I quite haven't figured out and I keep asking God to please show me what it is, why you have kept me thus far. Trust me when I tell you, he's going to, it's going to be manifest. You will see it. You will be able, right now you're walking in the faith. We want you to continue to walk in that faith. Um, you've asked him once to show you. Quit asking him to show you because I want him to show you and then be like, okay, go. No, no, no. It, your job here is not done. There are some things, just continue Veronica being who you are. You, are, you have a beautiful spirit. You are a beautiful woman. You are a hardworking woman. Mm -hmm. Continue to do that. I've all, and I always get the story messed up because I, it's the peas. I don't know if it's Paul or Peter who was out there on the ship with, with Jesus and they wanted to walk on the water with him. And as soon as he lost focus, I, I always mix it up. I always say, yeah. I think Peter. it was, huh? It's, it's Peter. Yeah. Okay, I always say Peter, but I'm like, is it Peter or is it Paul? But that story speaks volume for an individual. Because had he stayed focused on Jesus, he wouldn't have slipped. So if you, you ask for direction, you've asked for him to show you. So what I'm saying to you, stay focused, be Peter. Oh. Be Peter. Okay. Set your mind on what it is that you want and don't let anything or anybody distract you or take your focus off of it. Mm -hmm. 
That's all I can say. Okay. Okay. That's all oh, I can say. I want to say something too. Yeah. You know, we all are like, we all are caught up in our own lives, you know, and sometimes when we're like, for me, for example, we're mad at the world and, you know, I, like I can never take it back you know me not talking to you then and that part of your life but it really just like I like that doesn't <laughs> go with me Veronica you know and so I who are, like, I'm like, sorry but who are, who are you introduce who you are <laughs> oh I'm Keisha I work with Veronica she's okay. like she's like my mom big sister she always getting on me but I love her you know okay like okay. she just always is there for me and I, I just I love her Yes. And then don't we um, love you too, Keisha. Yeah, so it's like during I like when she was going through this, I wasn't really talking to her. I was mad at the war. I wasn't even at work at the time. And I just it makes me feel horrible, you know, that she was going through all that and I had no idea. And I, yeah, I can't ever take that back, but I just I'm gonna <laughs> be there now, you know. So what in whichever way I can. So that's all. I okay. love you, Veronica. So. I love you too. <laughs> yeah. Are you? You better not. <laughs> okay. I'm not. You better not. <laughs> but. That's beautiful. That's Thank you for yeah. coming on and supporting her. This is what I'm talking about. And this is why I do this. Um, not in the month of October, because in the month of October, everybody, you know, breast cancer awareness walks and um, yeah. they, they're always doing something. Okay, so now we're no longer in October, we're in November. Let's hear about those women that survived it. We're not walking now. <laughs> you know, we're not doing the breast cancer squats and walks and push-ups and whatever else that they're doing to bring awareness. And so every year, this is what, this is our second year. And I want to continue to do this, to hear the stories. We're not, I'm not Miss Coleman, Susan Coleman. I'm, I'm not her. Um, so I'm not, I can't have this big old uh, forum right. where you can come out and we do all of that. This is an intimate, I know you kind of thing. And so um, if there's other women, we want, I want to do four to five women every single year um, to share their story. And then as time press on, who knows, I may be able to do a big event and bring you out and you know, give flowers and all of that other kind of stuff. But Top Flight just started. This is our third year. So I just want to, you know, pay homage to my, to my people while they are still here and mm -hmm. shower you with love and give you that attention and that acknowledgement that I admire you for your strength. I can't say what I could or could not do and what I would or would not do. But what I can say is your strength, Simone's strength, Vicky's strength, and Jackie's strength has shown me this year. Last year, it was my Aunt Joanne. It was my girlfriend, Yolanda Powell, and my um, classmate, Gloria Cotton, that showed their strength. So it's seven strong women that I've come in contact with over the past years that have showed me, that have told me and the world that it takes strength in your faith in God to make it through as well as the strength and the support from your family. Thank you. Yeah. So I, um, it's two o'clock. We were gonna run beyond that if needed, but um, I don't see anybody else that have any questions or that would like to chime in. It's Angela That's on here. Um, Angela. I don't know. Yes, I'm on here, girlfriend. Oh, okay. Do what you got to do, okay? Because <laughs> you promised what? me you didn't do it yet. Oh, hey, what? Andrew. Huh? You wait. Who, which one are you talking about? Which Andrew, Andrew are you talking Cooper. about? I'm on here. What I promise you, girl? Uh, to go get tested, and you ain't done nothing yet. Oh, girl. Did you yes, just put me on the spot like that? Uh huh, I did. <laughs> there she go. Look, I'm and I'm gonna like, tell you. I don't know who you. I don't know who you are, Angela, but yes, please go get tested. Okay, Veronica, I'm. I got you. I'm gonna go and do it. Uh, okay. I okay. Ain't nothing but I said. Hey, Keisha. 
She said, you I'm, see, going, I'm going you know, on my vacation. I can see you, but you can't see me because I'm I'm not presentable. Oh, you I know, I'm my head exactly scarf on. Opposite, you guys, I like I'm a worry ward. So anytime I feel any little pain, I'm like making a doctor's appointment. Like I'm just kind of like, like just I get scared real fast. So I'm like, oh my god, I feel this pain. So I'm on my <laughs> way to the doctor. Seriously, don't like, don't feel don't get scared. But let me say, yeah, this it again. gets me nervous. Like. Okay, so hold on one second. I don't want you all to stop what you're saying. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to end the Facebook and the recording and we okay. can keep talking because we don't need to put the rest of this good okay. stuff and look, throwing folks under the bus, Veronica. <laughs> oh, no. She, oh, no, no. She no, 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 no. No, but what I, good I, for I will it. say, um, the, the takeaway... It's, it's hard to hurt Angela's feeling, trust me. There you go. <laughs> But the takeaways for me is, ladies, make your your annual checkups on a day that you can remember or a month you can remember. Veronica's is in June, her birthday month. That way, you know, for me, October, I, t I call October my girly month. I go for my mammogram and my pap smears. I'll never forget in October because that's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I don't do it in May because I'm... I'm bombarded. That's my birthday month. So I'm trying to party and have a good time. I don't need no kind of news, good or bad, in the month of May. So I'm going to thank the people on Facebook for chiming in. I'm going to thank those on YouTube and let you all know that Top Flight Defense, please go to our website, www.topflightdefenseinc.org. Sign up for our newsletter so you can stay in on all of the wonderful things that we do. Monthly, we do awareness classes, we do uh, informative classes. Uh, we have BMO Harris Bank comes in second Tuesday of every month talking everything in banking. We have Social Security Administration coming on the fourth Wednesday of every month talking everything Social Security. We want to see your smiley faces. And next year, March 26th, let's talk about us. That's our event for nothing but ladies. So thank you all to everyone on Facebook. I appreciate you. Wait a minute. Okay, I appreciate you. Come back and see us.